These are the notes for unit two, day six, and uh, they start on page 18 of your note packet. Um, a reminder to bring your textbook and graphing calculator to the next class, your handheld one. Um, super important. Uh, we want you working off that handheld calculator uh, at all times. Uh, so that's the next class. Okay, so uh, we're still working with derivative rules. Okay, and um, and specifically the power rule. So how do we use the derivative? You know, what, what does it what does it mean, and and how how can we kind of apply it um, to to certain questions? So we're going to go through this again. When I say derivative, you think slope, and when I say slope, you think derivative, right? And this has this is very applicable for this uh, this set of notes for sure. Um, so when we talk about going back to that screen, I guess before we leave the screen here, right? When I say derivative, you think slope. Remember that the derivative is the same as finding the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so um, when I what I can do then is I can ask questions in this fashion. Right, an equation of the line tangent to the graph, in this case, negative x, negative eight over x at the point where x is equal to four. Okay, so be, th this question, nowhere in this, in this question do you see the word derivative, right? None whatsoever. It's writing an equation of a tangent line, right? Uh, but we know that writing an equation for a line involves finding the slope, and the only way to find the slope at one point is to use the derivative. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have all the criteria we have we need to write an equation for a line. So we need to find a point. We know that point x equals 4. And we're going to need to find the derivative because when we evaluate the derivative at x equals 4, we're going to call it the slope. And then we can finally write the equation in point slope form or slope point form. Remember. Um, this, the slope point form is on an anchor chart at the at the front of my classroom. So we are it, this the, these are very narrowly focused questions, right? We're asking you to write the equation of a tangent line. These four steps will do it. I will ask you this type of question on every test to write an equation for a tangent line. Okay, so let's start getting uh, let's start making sure that we can do this consistently and correctly. Okay, so one find the coordinates. Well, we know x equals four. So if x is equal to 4 and we put that in for x, then y is equal to negative 2. So we're over here at 4 comma negative 2, right? We could read it right off the graph in this case because we have the graph. So we have that point. Now we have to find the derivative, right? I called it the y dx here. I called it y prime there. Remember, that's just two different notations for the same thing. So we have to differentiate this function, okay? y equals negative 8 over x. The only rule we have right now is the power rule. So we have to write that as a power. So if you remember back from the previous note taking session, or maybe it was the takeaways, I'm not quite sure it was one or the other, um, we have to rewrite this x in the denominator as x to a power. So x in the denominator is x to the minus one power. So now that we have it written as constant times x to a power, we can use the power rule. So we're gonna find y prime. It's gonna be negative eight, there's our constant times Bring down the power, negative 1 times x to the negative 2. This, is, this can't be uh, overlooked at all. Remember, 1 smaller than negative 1 is negative 2, right? Um, think about the number line. And I have a number line at the back of the room, okay? Going, getting smaller means going to the left on the number line. So this is the derivative. I'm going to rewrite that derivative as a fraction. So this x to the minus 2 is going to become an x squared in the denominator. Okay, so there's my derivative, 8 over x squared. Now I can do step 3, evaluate the derivative at this point, x comma y. Okay, so um, we're going to evaluate this at 4. So 8 over 4 squared is 8 over 16, which is a half. And we're going to call that the slope. Okay, notice I didn't even simplify it. I just kept it as 8 over 16. You don't have to reduce if you don't want to. Okay, now we're going to write the equation in point slope form. Okay, we've got our point. We've got our slope. 
and we're going to put it in that point slope form. Y equals m x minus x1 plus x2. And we're done. Now I happen to have reduced this to a half. You could have 8 over 16 here if you wanted to. You could make this just minus 2 if you wanted to. Okay, all of those are equivalent forms and therefore correct answers. So we're done. We followed those four steps and we're done. Um, I just cleaned it up a little bit, right? Cleaned up this uh, algebraic notation. Okay, so I can't emphasize this enough. This question had, doesn't have the word derivative in it at all, but we know we need the derivative because we need, this, we need to find the slope to write an equation for a line. So here is the point, here is our line, right? We have a slope of two, so we're gonna go up one, right two. Or excuse me, a slope of a half. I said that totally wrong, up one, right two. So here's our slope of a half, there's our tangent line at the point x equals four. And we already went over those steps, they just didn't populate till the very end. Okay, so this is kind of a cool thing. Um, we can also, literally draw a tangent line um, using our graphing calculator. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna graph the function negative eight over x squared. Or negative eight over x, excuse me. That, uh, so I was thinking about the derivative. Um, so there is our uh, function. And then we're gonna use this draw key, okay? so. We're using this right here, and we're going to draw a tangent line. Okay, so we're going to do that, that option five, and we're going to draw the tangent line at x equals four. So we're going to type in a four here. We're going to type in a four and hit enter. And check this out. So a tangent line right there. There's your tangent line. Check this out. Our tangent line equation is right here. It's in, it's in slope intercept form, right? 0.5x minus four, right? That's our intercept here. Um, but that's a quick way on your calculator to get the equation for a tangent line, having your calculator do all of the math for you. It's also a great way to check. Now, that being said, more often, the majority of the time, I'm gonna ask you to find the equation for a tangent line on the no calculator part of your test. So you won't have this technology available to you um, that often, but it's just a nice way to, uh, to get that tangent line in a really quick fashion. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this isn't in the notes. This is kind of just sit and actively think here. So I have this question for you. What kind of derivative has a horizontal tangent? Okay, so I say derivative, you think, slope so take a moment to think about that sorry um take a moment to think take a moment to think there we go so i say derivative you think slope right so take a moment to think uh where are the locations of horizontal tangents in this on this function so horizontal tangents have what value slope? And I've got a typo there that's driving me a little crazy. There we go, take a moment and think. Sorry about all the mistakes there. Okay, so there's a horizontal tangent, right? It has a slope of zero. And there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one. So all of those locations have horizontal tangents which means all of those locations have a tangent line with slope equal to zero. So when they ask you to find those horizontal tangents, we know that we can say, if we're thinking, if we're thinking slope, we can also think derivative, we're finding those locations where the derivative is equal to zero. So um, what kind of derivative does a horizontal tangent have? Derivatives of horizontal tangents have, or horizontal tangents occur when derivatives are equal to zero. Okay, so this gives us a method right here. So this, this is a pretty powerful statement just right here, dy dx equals zero. This gives us a method. This says I can find the derivative and set it equal to zero, and then I can solve for x. Okay, 
And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, this is a no calculator allowed question. Where are the locations of the horizontal tangents to the graph? To the graph. After your solution is complete, graph the function to verify your answer. Okay, so notice that this question, this, these, these, this question again does not mention a derivative at all. But because it's talking about tangents, we know that we have to take the derivative. Okay, so here's our function, 3 quarters x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 2. So this requires good factoring skills. And we'll see why in just a second. All right, let's find the derivative um, for this function. So um, this, is, this is all written, let me back up here, I might be confusing to look at. This is all written as constant x to a power, right? Constant x to a power, constant. So we can do the power rule right away. So y prime is 3 fourths, bring down the 4, reduce the power, right? So 3 fourths times 4x cubed minus 2 times 3x squared plus 0. Right? Simplifying this, we end up getting 3x cubed minus 6x squared. Okay? So here's our derivative. We know by the definition that when our derivative is equal to 0, we have a horizontal tangent because tangent lines, slopes of 0 are horizontal lines. So we need to set this equal to 0. Okay, this is where the good factoring skills come into handy. So once we set the derivative equal to zero, the pattern will always be the same. We're going to factor it and we're going to solve it. So we're going to factor this. We're going to factor out um, a 3x squared, right? We can factor out a 3. We can factor out the biggest power of 2. And so we're left with 3x squared times the quantity x minus 2 equals zero. And then the zero product property says I can set each one of these equal to zero, right? So we have 3x squared equals zero. That's x equals zero. And then we have x minus 2 equal to zero, and that's x equal two. So we have zeros, we have zero slopes at x equals zero and x equals two, okay? That means we have those, those peaks and those valleys, right? Basically, so that's what it means. So um, we're gonna go ahead and graph the function. That's what the function looks like, okay? And, um, and then we're gonna look at these locations. Here's x equal to zero. And here's x equals 2. So here's a valley, right? And this isn't a peak, is it? It kind of flattens out and continues down. We call that a plateau. So, um, so that previous function had, zero ta has had tangents with slope of 0 at hills and valleys or peaks and valleys. This, this, the shape of this function actually has this flat spot or a plateau here, uh, which also has a slope of equal to 0. Okay, so um, we want the equations of the tangent line. So we want the equation of this line here and this line here, right? And so we need to know the y values. Well, we put the y values, we put the x equals zero in for this and we get a y value of two, right? We can see that graphically, that the equation for this tangent line is y equals two. Um, and then when we put two into the function, because that's our other solution, put two into the function, we get y equals negative two. And we could visually see that too. This horizontal tangent line would have a, an equation of y equals negative 2. So these are the equations of the horizontal tangent lines. Okay, so think about that. Horizontal tangents have zero slope. So it's 0x plus 2 for this one, 0x minus 2 for this one. If you wanted to write it in slope intercept form. Okay, so two skills here. Um, there are the lines if you want to draw them. So we have two skills here in this note set. One is writing the equation for a tangent line, and the other is locating horizontal tangents. Okay, both of those questions don't mention the derivative at all, but they, re they require the finding of the derivative in order to solve them. So that's where the question gets a little bit tricky. Okay, when we get back into class, we'll go over the takeaways. Um, from our notes and we will work on some of those topic questions.